Hello, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are at. Um, just want to welcome you today to another um, webinar in our monthly series for Onboard. So this one is going to be about Messenger. And um, today um, I am joined um, by my coworker here. So your hosts today are myself, Jenny Washington. I'm one of the implementation managers for Onboard. And then we've got Gabe Smith. Hi, everyone. Hope you're all having a fantastic Tuesday. So Gabe and I are going to be here with you. So I'll be kind of taking the lead on facilitating, but Gabe's going to be jumping in here with some examples. He's also going to be doing um, the chat and the Q&A function. So to that end, just a quick um, couple housekeeping items. Um, in the Zoom, you should see some controls that look like this up on the screen. Um, I believe that you're all already muted. Um, you can use the chat, raise hand, or the Q&A. Um, if you're having any trouble joining the audio um, and you want to connect the phone, you should have a participant ID that you can plug in. Um, if you need to, again, you know, kind of unmute or mute if that's not already done, there are some controls for that. And then we are gonna be using the Q&A primarily today. So that's where we would love for you to interact with Gabe and myself. So if you have any questions as we pose things to you, the participants, we'd love for you to primarily use the Q&A um, to provide the information and feedback. And then if you need any help um, or like um, you are having issues with the audio, you wanna let us know that I'm talking too softly, too loud, or whatnot, um, go ahead and use the chat or raise your hand. And like I said, Gabe's going to be monitoring that. So um, please, we want this to be interactive, right? So these sessions are meant to be topics that we think that would be helpful for you, whether it's about a new feature, like today for Messenger, um, or something else that's going on um, here at Passageways, or um, with you with customer success stories. So please do use the Q&A. Um, to engage with us. And as a reminder, um, often we get questions about the session for today. So um, just wanted to let you know that we do have our YouTube channel. And so while the product is on board, just as a reminder, our company is Passageways. So if you do want to go to YouTube and search for Passageways, you can check out um, our channel with all of our different videos, customer uh, testimonials and stories, um, as well as other things about our features. And then we also have a community in Onboard. So if you go to help.passageways.com and you click on the community, you will see that we have um, this Onboard webinar section where you can return and look at past webinars if you would like, and this webinar will be posted there. Okay, so let's get started. Um, Onboard Messenger, again, is the feature for our session today. And um, I wanted to show you uh, how to use Onboard Messenger today, where you can find it. And then we'll be talking about some use cases. And we're going to ask you guys, if you're using it, to give us some examples so that we can, in turn, share those back with our customers and give people ideas. So, so Onboard Messenger is something that we recently um, developed and launched. And the intent here is to give you a way to quickly um, communicate, collaborate, and engage. And we'll talk about different ways, whether you're an administrator, a board member, um, leadership, different kind of use cases and scenarios for different people. But again, this is all around communicating and with Onboard being a central point um, of uh, you know the platform to do all of that within. So who has access to Messenger? So if you are a group that joined us um, you know over a year ago perhaps you might be on what we call our legacy enterprise package. Mm -hmm. So you have access to Messenger and on my screen here I'm kind of pointing in this graphic to where you would find Messenger in your menu on the left. Also for our newer customers, we kind of redid our packages into suites. So if you have the collaboration add-on, you have Messenger. 
along with the other items in collaboration, which include the full dashboard with all of the different panels that you can customize, um, the ability for users to share their annotations, and then of course now Messenger. And then we are also offering Messenger as an a la carte option. So if you don't have Messenger and after today or at some point in the future, you are interested, um, we can absolutely work with you on pricing. So any questions at this point, Dean, or Gabe, are we doing okay? Yep. Doing okay on the questions thus far. All right. So we want to kind of um, spur, you know, more interest because this is a newer product. Um, we kind of solicited input ahead of this webinar to see what were some of the use cases out there. And of course, we had some in mind. So if you're not quite sure yet and you haven't really launched Messenger and you have access to it, we'd like to share a couple use cases that we can think of. So the first one has to do with meeting preparation, right? So um, obviously um, all of you on here are typically administrators or creators and in that role. So for you, here's an example. So let's say that you have uploaded the consent agenda to Onboard and you um, interact with the board chair, right? You wanna get feedback, you wanna make sure that everything is good to go before you publish that out to everybody. So what you could do with Messenger is in the meeting, you can copy the URL to the meeting, put it into Messenger and specifically send it just to the chair. So the chair is gonna receive a notification if he or she clicks on the meeting link, it'll take them to the board packet with the agenda, uh, consent agenda, and it can be reviewed. And then if they find anything that needs to be changed or edited, again, they can use Messenger to quickly send that right back to you. So that's just one you know, particular example. Um, obviously, there are others related to meeting preparation. So we'll talk about those. Dean. Uh, Excuse me, Gabe's got <laughs> some of those. I've got some of those. Um, but let's look at another one, kind of a different persona. So let's say in the meeting, um, Messenger is available. So during the meeting, let's say you have somebody new on your board. So a new director has a question about the financial report. So, you know, instead of maybe interrupting the flow of the meeting, they want to use Messenger just to send a specific private message to the CFO who would be able to answer her question. So the CFO has his phone, he's got the app, so he gets the notification um, during the meeting and um, responds, and now the director can be better engaged with the material and move along without having interrupted the flow. So those are um, just really a couple um, of use cases. And, and before we get to some examples from you all, which is really important, we wanna know how you are thinking about using Messenger. And we know that many of you have done some internal testing, right? Like I said, we asked some of the groups um, that we see have some messenger activity, how you're using it. Many of you said that you're still kind of just testing it out. Some of you have actually used it, um, but I wanna show you and make sure you understand the different ways that um, you and your users can interact and access messenger because it's nice that you can get to it from the browser. So this first slide, is showing you when you're accessing onboard from the browser. Um, you've got, um, again, your menu along the left and you've got your messenger icon. Then we have individuals that are using tablets like iPad, um, Androids. One of the nice things on the app is that you can actually open messenger in tandem with the board book. Okay, so that's a, a feature specific to the app. So in this graphic here, you'll see I've got the tablet and I'm in the open book view. So I've got my materials showing on the right. On the left, down at the bottom, instead of the agenda being the focal point, you'll see that the Messenger app can be launched. So you can even be using this again in an in-meeting situation or as a director or a senior leader, if you're preparing for the meeting and you come across something, that's another tool that you can use Messenger to communicate out. And then, of course, we have the app for the phones. So whichever device you're using, um, you can access. So I'm looking to Gabe. Oh yeah, we, now now that we're getting into the to it, we're getting some some questions coming through. So uh, I've got a couple of great questions, um, and I'll make sure and note who's asking the question just so that way, you know, you know that we're, we're getting that question addressed. 
Um, so first one, I think just to kind of start off, there's a couple ones that are a little bit similar, uh, but Jan um, has asked, how are board members notified that I've sent them a message? Can I recall a message? Um, I was trying it out just now and a message was sent. Great. So Jan, um, very good question. In fact, a little bit later here, we're going to cover um, in more detail the way that notifications work and some other things that we think you'll have questions about. But to answer your question, um, this messenger version is um, kind of like iteration number one, right? So we wanted to get the core, functionally, core functionality out there so that people could start using it and giving us feedback. So you cannot currently recall a message that has been sent to answer that question. Okay. Um, and then, um, so kind of related to that, a little bit into the notifications as well as then kind of the accessibility here in that respect. Um, so Hugh um, has asked, uh, messenger users need to be logged in to receive the messages, correct? Uh, have you considered generating an email to that user who only sporadically logs in to let them know that they have an, an onboard message? Yeah. Hi, Hugh. Hello. Aloha from, um, I think if you're uh, there in Hawaii, this is Hugh Jones. So uh, <clears throat> you do not have to be logged in. So that's the beauty of the messenger. And again, I'll get to the notifications area, but since you guys are asking about that, um, which is very important, right? You don't have to be logged in. So let's say um, I do have the app on my tablet and someone um, posts a message and I'm a part of that discussion, I will get a push notification. But if I'm not logged in, um, which is gonna be common, right? If it's not meeting time or things like that, I may not be looking at my iPad or I may miss that. So if you did miss that, you will get an email. So there are a series of emails. We wanna be thoughtful about that. Um, so that someone who's not logged in or seeing that push notification can get an email reminder. Okay, and uh, we also have then Robert um, who's asked, uh, are the messages sent during the meeting saved? Uh, and if so, for how long? And so just to, I guess to clarify that, there isn't gonna be any difference whether it's the, the messages are being sent while a meeting's taking place or, or not taking place, if it's before or after the meeting, just all kind of a, a general conversation thread. Um, but, but in terms of the duration, uh, they will remain in your onboard messenger portal. So uh, those messages cannot be deleted uh, at this, again, this pre present, present moment. Um, once a message thread begins, uh, it will stay in the messenger portal mm -hmm. uh, of, of the onboard portal there. Yeah, so. and actually on this slide here, just to kind of add to what Gabe said, if you see the slide here on the left, you can see that I have a series of conversations um, some with groups like John and, or excuse me, individuals, John and William, and then you see governance committee, board of directors. So as long as you're having a communication, um, whether it's tomorrow with the same group, you're gonna go back to that same board of directors thread and pick up the conversation. So you'll just have one instance for board of directors. If you have a conversation two weeks from now with that same group, it'll be there. Um, for historical purposes for auditing and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and move along. We might have some more things that come up. So Gabe's going to let me know. And um, actually, um, I want to show you how it works, right? So many of you, I think, on the phone have Messenger that are watching. But if you haven't used it or if you don't have Messenger, this is how you can actually use it. Very easy, right? So it's, we want to make it easy to start. So step one, you're going to um, find a Messenger in the menu. Um, and you're going to click on compose. And then step two, you have the option of either picking from the window that's going to fly out. Once you hit compose, you can pick from your members list and you can find an individual person and check their name or more than one individual, or you can go to the groups and select a group and expand that group and see who all is in that group. Um, so you can use those in combination if you want to use groups and then add individual members. And then step three, once you've selected the individuals, you're going to hit start conversation. And then finally, step four, um, you type your message and hit send at the bottom. So really, it's as easy as that. So now that we've actually gone through um, some scenarios um, that we had planned for, um, we'd love to hear any examples from you all and then we'll share some more. So if you have used Messenger um, or you have thought about how you might want to use Messenger, 
or you have questions about um, other scenarios, this is a great time for you to go ahead and plug in those items into the Q&A. So Gabe's watching those. Yeah, I think, I think this gets back to where, you know, our peers, you know, we learn from our peers at that standpoint. And so all of you are, you know, in the, in the, the same kind of background there, whether it be different industries, uh, but all have to deal with meeting preparations and dealing with board members all over the place. And so um, I, I think it's always helpful for, for everyone who, who has kind of some ideas and how they may be able to use this to help kind of share that, um, just perfect those kind of options. So kind of around that, I'll get the, the ball rolling. I'm working with a couple customers um, that are thinking about, about utilizing Messenger. Um, one has been using, I like to get some feedback uh, from board members in preparation for, for meetings. Uh, and they've been using the uh, survey uh, tool within Onboard uh, to complete that action. However, they've noticed that there's been, there's kind of a, a need for some back and forth sometimes on some of those survey questions. And so, you know, sometimes the, the survey option didn't lend itself to be the best then uh, tool for that, uh, to have that kind of back and forth conversation. Um, so they're, you know, granted it's, it's you know, Messenger has just been released here. Uh, it was the October mm -hmm. release, correct, Jenny? So just, so we're still having, and, and fully respect, a lot of organizations are still kind of getting the feelers out and, and seeing how they might use it. Uh, but they have some ideas now of trying to see uh, if Messenger could be a good tool for that, um, you know, to be able to have those kind of survey questions and lead up to the meeting. So we'll see how, how that works uh, with the next couple of board meetings that they're running. And also, I think it's, it's important to know, I mean, one of the key pieces here with Onboard Messenger uh, is the security uh, because it is within uh, Onboard uh, portal. So it offers that same kind of encryption and security uh, that we offer then for all of your board materials there. And so that really lends itself well, um, especially if, if uh, an organization then has uh, a board that is engaged, right? That's great. It's wonderful. People are communicating with each other, but we often see that those communications tend to be through email, maybe one-off emails to each other, uh, or maybe they're actually sending it via text message. Uh, and, and those different then um, uh, ways of communication may not be the most secure. Uh, and so in this case, having then those kind of one-off conversations, uh, if, if again, one board member is messaging the other uh, for a couple questions they had or, or wanted to make sure that they're identifying the right um, agenda item there that they're gonna discuss uh, or, or, or you know, spend some more focus on, uh, that they're able to do that inside then the onboard messenger rather than maybe an unsecure uh, email or text message uh, that could be compromised in any way. So uh, I thought those were, you know, again, a couple, couple of good scenarios. Uh, and again, we'll, I think we start getting some text coming in. So we'll see here if, uh, if we're able to, to bring up some other ones. Um, so I've got one in terms of, um, uh, we've got actually one of our, our colleagues here, one of our fellow customer success managers, bringing up that one of their customers uh, said that Messenger would be a great way to communicate with their auditors uh, since she has to interact with them a lot and she needs to have records of everything. Um, so that might be a, a good example in terms of it. And, and obviously, again, this is one of the benefits of having that, that log not go anywhere because then if it's three months later, uh, you can be able to come back to that, to that particular then conversation thread with the auditor and you have everything, a paper trail and, and everything of, of that such. Yeah, um, that's a great one. Um, so they, yeah, if, sometimes you have to think a little bit outside of the scope of, you know, your standard user who might be, you know, a senior leader or a board director. So if you've got um, auditors um, that have the capability to have a license. So uh, Carla, um, who again is, is um, uh, an organization that, that I work with, and I'm glad to see Carla here. Um, so she brought up an idea as well in terms of, um, um, again, they're kind of recent to using Messenger. Uh, but they had then, um, in terms of several threads, several message threads then that were kind of going on between many board members, uh, and there was often a lot of confusion uh, in that, and now they're able to um, uh, consolidate that all into one message thread leading up to it, which is, has made it then less of a headache for the board members having to track down that one then thread that's going to have a conversation with maybe just two people at that point. So, yeah, and I think, again, that goes back to email. Anytime you have like an email with a distribution list of people on it, some people might reply, some people might reply all. So you might be missing pieces of the conversation just based on a user hitting, you know, reply versus reply all. 
Um, so not only is it, you know, from a security standpoint, better perhaps than using email, but there's another use case of how email can, you know, not um, provide the confidence that you're assured that you've seen everything. So when you have the messenger thread, you can always go back and make sure that you've been uh, kept apprised of everything in that thread. So we've got, uh, and uh, really appreciate all the, the feedback. This is all great stuff. Um, uh, Hugh uh, has also done a couple different different scenarios I want to touch on. I think they're great. Um, one is, uh, you know, communicating with committees is a great use uh, and with staff and preparing an agenda. Uh, like, hey, I've, I've posted a draft agenda. Please review and suggest additions. Uh, communicating about meeting t logistics, parking. I mean, just even some of that, that you know, like, like, uh, like Hugh said, even just some of the simple logistics um, can sometimes be a bit complex when you have multiple messages out there. Uh, so that can certainly streamline those things. Uh, or does anyone need to bring a copy of the meeting book for any reason? Please remember to RSVP. So little, oh my gosh, all those little reminders like that. You could even great. like, so you, you mentioned parking, right? So I was recently um, <laughs> working with um, Utah State University, their foundation board. And um, Sydney here, um, she had sent this out beforehand, before I had gotten there. So she said that she used Messenger to send the parking instructions, like you said, and she selected just those specific board members that are out of town. So rather than selecting the entire group, she was able to just share it. And now she resent this to me. So you, you can do like um, line spacing and things like that. So when she copied and pasted it, she kind of threw it in, but this is her message. Um, she even included a link in here. Of course, I blocked out her cell phone number, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, if you change the location of the meeting at the last minute, um, the time of the meeting changes. You recently um, added materials to the board packet last minute, things like that. Um, all those things are great. And, and Hugh even had another one scenario and kind of uh, piggybacking off of that scenario that you had uh, and yours is um, also what about if, you know, uh, the chair then um, uh, forgets or passes over something in the agenda. Again, a very subtle way of being able for someone to remind them that that's been passed over rather than uh, now, then, so, then someone having to, to take the leap off the cliff to, to let them know publicly. <laughs> yeah, so that's I a think, good one. I think I think that's a, a, a great a great uh, a great point there. So uh, we've also we've got a couple more, and then we've got a couple questions uh, coming related to it. So let me. Um, so Tricia has noted recouraging trustees to use Messenger, um, which provides a secure platform rather than email. So 100%, Tricia, I think that's that's excellent. Um, so Jill um, has. I'm hoping to use. Uh, the messenger feature in lieu of uh, trying to schedule a conference call with trustee committees that need to approve materials prior to scheduled meeting dates. Um, that way all committee members would be able to weigh in in the discussion instead of just those at the available, that those just those that are available at the call time. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. So and I think Trisha too um, mentioned to me an email that she used messenger as well. So Jill, Trisha, I think many of you will find that perhaps instead of a survey, whether it's our survey tool, or some of you might be using email to set up future meeting dates and collect feedback. Again, that more back and forth conversation, a survey is a great way to kind of pull and get people to answer. But if you wanna have some back and forth dialogue, the messenger tool allows you to do that same thing. You can say, here are the possible meeting dates that we're thinking of, please respond um, and let us know. And you might get more information um, captured from that as to why a date is good or bad, something you may have not thought of or may have not been able to collect in just a survey. So those are fantastic. And uh, Janet, I want to make sure and acknowledge uh, your point. I think that would be something that we would kind of note then as a uh, product suggestion related to it. So Janet has a, a, a great point of it. Would love for the director to be able to share files in Messenger. Um, so uh, again, no ability to, to have then files attached within Messenger now. Uh, but that is definitely something great that we can uh, note then, Janet, and make sure that that gets on to our, to our development team. Yeah, so I think at this point, what we'll do is we're going to go kind of back over here to some helpful tips and yep. information. It's going to cover um, the notifications, right? So there were some already some questions about that. So we'll hit those notifications. Some other things that we think that you should be aware of. And I think that might spur some more questions and some more thoughts. So we're going to kind of go back to the slides right now. Um, thank you so much, Gabe, and thank you guys for participating because this is why we're doing this, is to help each other. Um, 
So again, with the notifications, when a user receives a message, if they have the app, they will get a push notification. Okay, so for anybody that has the app on their phone, their tablet, um, their PC, if they're using the Windows app, they will get a push notification. They'll also get an email notification. Now, again, if you don't view that, 15 minutes later, you will get an email. Okay, so for those of you that might miss it, um, we're gonna send you just a quick reminder in your email. Now, if you still continue to get messages, but you haven't viewed them, four hours later, you'll get another email communication. So we're gonna kind of make sure that you don't miss something, but we're not gonna over communicate. If you have feedback as you use this from yourself, from your users about the timing of the notifications, please, we welcome that. So any questions as a follow-up yet to the notifications, Gabe, um, coming in? So Hugh just asked, is the email notification a recent enhancement to this Messenger feature? Yeah, so Hugh, thank you. I know that you were part of the initial beta testing, which we thank you very much. And I believe that that was probably added after. So um, it, when we did the general release, it was it was it was made available at that time. Um, yep, <laughs> wonderful. Thank Fantastic. You. So a couple other things outside of notifications. So we're going to continue on here a little bit with some more helpful information. So currently, again, remember this is the first iteration with just the core functionality of Messenger. You can put hyperlinks and you can put emojis. <laughs> um, now, again, we've already talked about this. Messenger messages do currently remain in onboard indefinitely. So currently they're there, um, which is helpful for that auditor use case that we talked about. Um, in case you're wondering, there is a 4,000 character limit. If you're typing, 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 um, it will let you know when you get to the end. It won't let you type any further um, so that you're aware that you've hit a limit. Um, many of you, so government and higher ed public institutions that um, are uh, having to be in compliance with their either their state or general open meetings laws um, have asked us before about can we disable Messenger. So yes, you can. So if you have Messenger, you can go into your dashboard and then at the top is the organization info page or tab and you can go down and disable Messenger for all users and then it will remove the messenger icon from your main menu navigation. Um, I showed this in one of the previous slides, so this last bullet point here about the side-by-side -side view. So again, for those people who are using the app, you can actually have messenger and the board book open at the same time. So that's currently available um, on the, you know, the apps, specifically iOS or Android, not currently for the, the Windows app um, and not available in the browser. So, so those are a couple of things that we wanted to make sure. Now, we've already hit on some of these things. You guys have been mentioning, hey, it would be nice to have this or that. We want to get your feedback. So here are some possible, and I've underscored, <laughs> underline the possible um, future features that we considered right from the beginning and we're collecting feedback and adding to this. So just a few of these. Um, so the ability for you to auto delete your messages or, you know, manually. So either set them up so that after a period of time, they auto, you know, automatically delete, or of course, being able to just choose to manually delete your own messages, the ability to leave a conversation. So right now, um, whoever starts the conversation chooses who's going to participate and you currently cannot leave a conversation. Um, we're also thinking about channels. So Messenger was never built to really compete with things that you might use like Slack or Teams. But again, um, the onboard security is um, one of the benefits that you might not get with something like a Slack or, or a Teams. Plus it keeps everything centralized. Your users don't have to download a separate software or app. But we are looking at maybe be able to create channels that have different types of permissions um, being able to edit a message that's been sent, perhaps even adding some profanity filtering. So again, we need your suggestions. So I'm going to look over here at Gabe and see what we've got going on in the, the Q and A. Yeah, so we'll we'll um, queue up some more kind of feedback points and certain things. Um, just to, I, I want to um, highlight a couple things from from Robert um, here. So uh, just to probably clarify on 
like push notifications okay. and what that means. And then also just kind of related to, I think everybody is, is probably thinking of just using messenger than within the uh, uh, the onboard portal itself so is you know in terms of also through iphone devices might want to talk let's talk about that too in terms of what that looks like with the notifications okay. so you, uh well let me okay. let me say it to you and then. so yeah um just to clarify so when i said push notification i'm speaking of um on the app if you install the passageways onboard app you can choose just like with any other app to say, yes, I want push notifications, meaning it's kind of like a little, uh, almost like a text message alert on your device that's coming from the app to let you know that there's something new activity. So um, I would say it's similar to a text message. It's just kind of like a pop-up on yeah. your screen. Would you? Yeah, so it, so that at least that there's kind of an, an action or something recent that is taking place. And, now, and that is only for iPhone with the iPhone app, and correct? Android. And and it is Android now. Yeah. Windows is still to come, correct? Right. Yeah. So um, just for that, for that. So if you have other apps like you subscribe to news or you know CNN or something, you might see um, and maybe assimilate what we're talking about to that, like that lets you know, oh, yep, something new came in on your CNN app. So yep. same thing with Messenger. Um, um, and then in respect to that. I think we were also talking about, again, kind of back to that accessibility. Um, Messenger can be used whether I'm on my, I have an Android phone. So maybe I'm on my Android phone and I'm participating in the discussion using Messenger inside the app and I'm sending a message to Gabe and Gabe happens to be on his computer. So you yeah. can access Messenger from um, the menu if you're logged in through the browser or through the app, you can launch the Messenger. So I... Yeah, no, I think I think that makes that sense. And, then, yeah. and again, in terms of the um, uh, reminders that if you haven't accessed um, then within Onboard, that's gonna be an email. Right. Notification. So not not a text message or anything there because the, those phone numbers won't, you know, won't be in the system in that regard to, to where it's going to be sending text messages. It would be an, an email notification. So again, just wanting to clarify on on that particular point uh, and that uh, again, Messenger itself, if it, if it is a part of um, your package, whether it was was purchased a la carte um, or if it is a part then of collaboration suites, um, or then in terms of the legacy enterprise package, um, that would be part of your service services and it would be enabled by default. So it would be kind of ready to go in that respect. Um, and you would not be able to disable the messenger there for just one user, for example. So right. again, just wanna make sure uh, that everybody's clear on that in terms of the accessibility. And then real quickly, we also have uh, a question from Jan. Uh, can only the board members invited see the conversation now and in the future. So, um, so we'll, we'll, there's a couple things to that. Um, so, because uh, I think there might be a couple different directions you may you may be asking that from. Um, so, the they would have to be registered users within Onboard Portal first. So, um, let's say you know you could you would not be able to send a message to John Doe uh, who is not a user in your Onboard Portal. Um, and then we're getting into then a second scenario of if I, let's say I created this this uh, message thread then that involves 10 people, okay? Um, those 10 individuals that are gonna have access to that message thread then um, within their onboard portal uh, for an indefinite period. There, mm -hmm. there is, so, you know, you'll be able to keep, you know, even if, even if no one's continuing that conversation, let's say uh, the last message to that was done two months ago, people will still be able to see an active history uh, of that message thread. So um, again, you, when you're first creating that message, you can determine who's going to be in that message. Once you kind of hit submit to then essentially, you know, uh, set that, um, you are not able to go back in and now start removing people. Yeah. Um, now we did, we, there was a particular scenario that, that Jenny and I wanted to discuss, um, that we did see as, as a particular, uh, an example that kind of came in, in terms of working with a client, um, is the, we get, we talked about from inviting from an individual level or inviting from a group. So one way of kind of maybe utilizing that to where obviously things can change quite rapidly with, with different people. 
Uh, one thing is if you invite a group, let's say you have the board of directors as a group and that consists of, of 10 people um, and you then um, are doing that message thread to that entire group and you actually select then the board of directors group rather than inviting them all individually. Let's say then several messages have taken place through the course of a week and then a new board member is coming on board. Uh, so you've gone into the member directory, you've added that individual now as a board member, uh, they have a login, uh, you've also now added them to the board of directors group. They will then automatically be added to that messenger thread that's to all of the board of directors group. Okay, so that is kind of one caveat to that scenario. Um, so that I would say would be a, a good best practice tip is that if you know that, okay, this particular message thread is going to be then for the full board of directors or for a particular committee that you have, uh, probably best then to do it uh, and as a group and actually use then the group ad um, for that list. So then that way, if you are adding any people to that group at all, um, they will be added to that message thread. So hopefully that's helpful. Again, uh, I, I realize that some, sometimes some of these things can get, uh, we can get a little bit too far into the weeds with it. We certainly don't want to do that here for just a, um, this today's webinar. And uh, I think this is, is a good point to underscore. Anytime you have any kind of questions um, or want to even kind of get a soundboard um, you know, or use a soundboard to kind of see if a particular theory or an idea might be useful, um, that's what your customer success team uh, is there for. So I certainly encourage you all to uh, reach out to your customer success manager uh, if you have any further questions with that kind of those kind of things, or if you again want to get some ideas of some different use cases or um, some potential theories that you have and how you might use that, and we'll we'll be glad to help. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we want to be respectful of your time. I think we scheduled 45 minutes, so we're nearing the end of that. Um, we'll continue to watch to see if there are any more questions that come in. And again, like Gabe said, this is why we have unlimited access for you to a customer success manager. Um, and we have an entire team here. So if your customer success manager isn't in, um, we have a general email box, which is OB for onboard, OB pros uh, at passageways.com. So um, so we're going to go ahead and um, just a couple of more things then here to let you know. Um, so what's coming, right? So we do have some things coming up. Um, one of the things that we're actively working on is the remote wipe feature that will be for the app. So more to come on that. I'm not going to go into too much detail on these and um, enhanced profile fields. So a lot of you have reached out and said, you know, we need to track term limits. I need to have a specific field for um, the graduation year for someone who is uh, a member of my board that graduated from our institution for higher ed and things like that. So those are just some examples of potential um, additions to pro profile directory fields. Um, and then also public posting. So again, more for our um, public service like government, higher ed, uh, public institutions. Now, um, again, as with all things, these are subject to change just because um, there's a lot of things in play in here, but we are actively working to do new releases every four to six weeks. Um, and while this session was on Messenger, um, if you have um, any questions too about the new analytics and you have that, uh, please do reach out to your customer success team. That was actually released in November. So those are some things that we're actively working on. And then we wanna let you know about our webinar coming up for next month. So um, December 17th, please go ahead and maybe save the date. Um, we're going to be doing a kind of a year in review for 2019. So that's going to be things like, um, you know, what's happened over the course of the year with passageways. We've grown um, quite a bit. Um, we've done more frequent product releases. We'll just review what some of those are. Um, we want to highlight some specific success stories and use cases. Um, from customers. So if you're interested in being a part of that, we would welcome you to reach out and let us know. Reach out to your customer success manager if you'd like to, you know, join us or have us share your success story as part of this year in review. So December 17th, save the date on that. So I'm going to, before we wrap up here on our closing slide, see if we have anything. I know Gabe's still kind of interacting with some of you over the Q&A, which is fantastic. Um, we've got just a couple more minutes. Anything we want to do live here, Gabe? 
Nope, I think I think we're all set here. Okay. All right, so again, um, this is going to be on our YouTube channel here in a couple days. We're gonna do a little post-production work, make sure everything's good mm -hmm. on the quality of the sound there and the video and um, also in our community. So you can access all of the previous webinars in the community as well. So here is a picture of our full team, um, customer success. So we're all a part of this, even though today Gabe and I were being featured to share with you about Messenger. Again, thank you so much. Um, and um, we'll catch you hopefully at the December session. Yep. So. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks again for joining us. Bye, everybody.